Hello, my name is Scott Milliken, and I'm the lead developer for OpenDCIM, which is an open source software version of data center infrastructure management. We are currently working on our next version, uh, which will probably be uh, labeled version 3.0, and there's been a significant change in how we manage network connections in the data center. Uh, so this video is to try to bring some of our testers and users up to speed on those differences. Um, those of you who have already installed OpenDCIM should be familiar with our example data center. Um, the map for this is included with the distribution file. I've created two cabinets, AB04 and AB05, for us to work with today. So as soon as I click on this, you'll see the first difference. We now have front and rear sides for cabinets. Uh, this is a big request that's come in because uh, a lot of people want to be able to track um, cable management pieces that go on the back or things that just uh, aren't necessarily full depth of a cabinet and this way they can designate something as front and rear. Now if you don't have any devices in your cabinet that are half depth um, it will only show one side uh, which is the traditional uh, way that we've done it. So um, if I hadn't marked these three devices as half um, depth and in the rear, then it, we would have simply had this left-hand side of the screen. So patch panels are not um, completely new, uh, but the way that we are actually showing uh, the ports is a little bit different. Um, and you'll just see that I've uh, defined the back side of this particular patch panel uh, to connect to another patch panel, which happens to be in a different cabinet. And I've got uh, ports 1 through 24. So we'll come back to that in just a few minutes. First, we're going to talk about our chassis device. So I've defined a um, basically a Cisco 6500 series chassis, um, which is uh, pretty common in data centers. Um, now, common question that we get is, well, how do you define um, this and manage it when it gets to you know hundreds of ports in a single chassis? Well, first of all, you don't define it as one gigantic device. You define the chassis itself as the one device, and then you define each individual card. So um, I've got a chassis defined, but I haven't done any cards yet. So we'll just go ahead and put in uh, a card to slot number two, because that's where the test lab that the uh, guys have allowed me to connect to. And we'll put in an IP address. And now this is something new as well. Um, previously, you could only put in IP addresses for um, servers, um, and especially VMware servers. And then we'll just put in uh, our little test SNMP uh, community string. And as soon as we exit that particular field, it will turn to asterisks so that people can't really shoulder surf over you. So I've got a 48-port gig copper um, device that's in the back of my uh, or that's in my uh, chassis here and it's in slot number two and we'll create that and now that we've created it we can go in and tell it how many ports we have uh, and again this is the pre-release version so that's uh, probably going to go on the uh, bug list that we're not uh, going ahead and asking for number of data ports as we put in uh, cards. Um, then again, most cards don't have data ports, um, except if they go into a uh, network device. So uh, I've now updated it, and as soon as I do that, I have 48 ports created. And you'll notice that we've got a lot more fields than there used to be for these ports. So we have a port name, which is new, because we used to simply just say, well, it was 1 through 48 if you have 48 ports. But um, as we all know, uh, every uh, device out there seems to want to have its own way of uh, defining what port names are. Uh, some devices start with a zero, some start with a one. Um, others uh, have got their own uh, nomenclature that's dependent upon the particular card. So let's, uh, let's take a look at um, how we can talk to some of these devices and actually pull those names from the card itself. So in this particular chassis, I've actually got um, one, two, three, four, five, six cards. And when I click set first port, 
um, open DCIM talks SNMP to the uh, to the IP address, which happens to be the management interface for this chassis, and it's showing me all of the different cards that are in there, and we're not really sure which one there is or th that you're referencing, so we're having to get a little bit of human interaction. But as soon as I click Gigabit Ethernet two slash one, it's going to pull it and it's going to get the port names for all of those ports. So this is the port name that your network engineer would be very familiar with and would be very happy um, to know that you are starting to reference. Okay, so that's one thing that's, that's pretty handy. The next is um, when you are trying to make assignments for your ports uh, because a new server is coming in, it'd be handy to, uh, to know that the documentation you've been keeping track of, of you know, which device is connected into which port, is uh, somewhat accurate. So there's a little bit of a check and balance here that we can do. We can now click Refresh Status, and it will pull that device, and based upon the first port number that you designated, it will pull the link status. Everything with a green circle and a white check mark in it uh, has a positive link on it, and everything with a red circle um, with a white X in it would be something that doesn't have a link. So if uh, you were getting ready to make a port assignment on gig 2 slash 4 uh, and then you saw this link, then you would say, hmm, something must not be right because something is already plugged in there. All right, so that is the switch part. Now let's take a look at a server. So I've got a server defined here. It's just a simple little web server. And I said, okay, I've got four ports on it. And I went in, and unfortunately, we don't have a way to uh, use SNMP to pull the server and find out what the port names are, but you can go in and you can change the name of any port. Okay, all you have to do is just click on that device and type in whatever port name you want. Okay, so if you do that, then when it comes time to actually making references, um, for mapping out your, your various network connections, it makes it so much easier. Okay, so let's go back over to our switch and let's connect our server to one of the ports off of our copper card. Now we're going to do it from the switch side because this is the side where you can tell whether or not you already have a connection. So let's say I want to make a connection off of gig2 slash 5 and I want to go to web services. Well, but actually I've got to go through patch panels to get there, right? So I need to first go to this patch panel. Now, um, the devices for um, this drop-down selection uh, are sorted in a special way. It's, it lists everything that is in the current cabinet first, and then it lists in alphabetical order everything in all of the other cabinets defined in the database. So um, that way, you, you know, you're typically going to be looking to make a connection to something in the same cabinet. Um, so that's why they're at the top instead of just putting everything in alphabetical order. Now it just so happened that since I only have four devices basically in the database that it came out in alphabetical order either way. But as soon as you click um, your device, it will query and find out what the available port names are. Now, since it's a patch panel, the port name is the same thing as the port number. Okay. And uh, this is going to be a Cat5e, and I've defined that Cat5e's default color is orange. I can change it to any other color that I've defined. And uh, actually, we'll go back and look in the configuration screen to where you can see um, where you define those. So I now have a connection from my switch to my patch panel on port number one, and it's Cat5e orange. So let's just go over to that patch panel. And now you can see the connection from the patch panel side, or from the switch side to the patch panel. And uh, that's the front side. The back side is the part that connects to another patch panel in another cabinet, and that goes to patch panel AB05 AB04. So we'll just navigate to it next. And we want to finally make a connection on port 1 to our web services box. And you'll see that we get to choose by the nice little names that we put in instead of having to choose numbers and remember what number uh, was designating which particular port. Okay, so we've got ILO here and we'll save it. Now, um, that's pretty handy. Um, but now if you go through a lot of patch panels, that can get pretty complicated pretty quickly. So one of the things that uh, we've added is the ability to click on the port name 
when you're on any of these screens that show the, the, the port tables and it will bring up the uh, full path. So I've got a fairly simple one. It only goes through one patch or basically uh, one set of patch panels. I go from cabinet AB05, the server, into a patch panel which talks to another patch panel in a different cabinet and then it uh, has a connection make, uh, made over to the chassis. Um, slot number two, uh, gateway dash C2. So you can see that this is a chassis um, and then this is designated separately. So the uh, graphics are a little bit different between a server and a chassis. Uh, and then you can click any of these underlined hot links to take you directly to those spots. So now let's take a look at the configuration and see what the new stuff is. So you'll see it says database version 2.1 because again we haven't made the release yet for 3.0 so we haven't bothered to fix all of the installation and versions and everything like that because it's not finalized. We never do that until it's done. Okay, so if you go to configuration, you've got a new tab over here called cabling and you can basically just put in your media types and your colors. Um, so this is just a particular color code uh, scheme that we use here and um, that's what I've entered in and it's pretty much freeform text and uh, pop it in and uh, you're good to go. So this is what you'll be able to choose from when you're doing your port designations. Alright, so let's head back one more time and take a look at our switch configuration. Now if I had a lot of these it would be a bit more useful but um, uh, I have a label program uh, that will basically allow me to input um, an Excel spreadsheet uh, so that it will print out labels. Well we have a new export connections button and I'm not sure if this will show up on the video or not um, once I open the spreadsheet but uh, basically it will take this entire table and it will put it into an Excel spreadsheet and if you're able to see this you'll be able to tell that this would be something you could very easily put into um, a label making program and you could trim out the uh, rows that are empty uh, so that you're only dealing with the ones that make sense. Alright, so that's pretty much uh, it for what I'm going to cover on this. There are other new features uh, that are going to be part of 3.0, but uh, this is the main thing I wanted to uh, educate people on so that we can get them to start testing once I upload an instance to our test site. And unfortunately, I don't have um, a 6500 chassis that I can do SNMP communications with, so I had to do this in a test lab at work. Um, thank you for your time, and uh, don't forget to uh, Keep an eye on opendsim.org, and uh, you can join the mailing list there uh, to find out uh, the latest information and to join in on the discussion for uh, reporting any bugs or making feature requests, uh, things like that. Thank you.